Look, I like people. And I know that right now. You people are scared. You people are scared for your families. You're scared for your friends. But most important, you're scared of your future. And I know all this because deep down I'm scared too. But I want to tell you that being scared isn't a bad thing. Because we all need to be a little bit scared to be brave. And right now, we need to be brave. We need to be brave so that those people helping others keep on their iron will. We need to keep fighting so that people that are in dark places get hope that things will get better. And we need to be brave so we can overcome this obstacle. So I'm asking you all to be brave. But promise me that you're not going to be brave for yourself. You're going to be brave for each other. For your neighbors. Because although we may not be able to see each other right now, face to face, but that doesn't matter. We are people. And people can do beautiful things. No matter whether we're together or apart. So that's why I like people. Because people can do beautiful things. And no matter what comes our way, we will get through it. Because we're people. Thank you. I remember it happened right after the coronavirus epidemic and quarantine. I had lost my job due to the economy crash. And that day I was on my way to a job interview. When I left my apartment, I was already late. So I decided to take a shortcut. The only one I knew of at the time was down this alleyway. There are always a bunch of drug addicted homeless people down there who were dirty, begged you for your money and were crazy people. Or at least that is what I thought of them at the time. I crossed over into the parking garage and down to the alleyway. As I turned into the alleyway, I remember I couldn't hear any noise. I remember thinking, the homeless sleep in late, don't care, and then complain they don't have a job. Typical. But as I walked by the dumpsters, the cardboard and the trash, I realized that no one was here, except for a man in an orange vest collecting old ripped clothes, canned food, and blankets off the street. I should have just walked by and not said anything to him. I had a job interview and if I talked to him, I would be late. But I did. I asked him, where did all the homeless people go? I can still picture his face when he turned around and looked at me to this day. He furrowed his brows, clenched his teeth, and his eyes, his cold eyes, looked at me in an annoyed, disgusted kind of way. He then told me in a sarcastic way, Oh, you didn't hear? They all died from the virus of starvation. So now they're all dead. I stood there for a second. Stunned anyone would talk to someone that way. I mean, he looked at me as if I had murdered these people. I went over into the parking garage and into the stairwell. And I started to bawl my eyes out. I had never been a very 
emotional person, but that day, that day was different. I cried for everything in the world and nothing at all. Maybe you think that this was a dramatic reaction or maybe you think it's exactly what you would have done. You know, it's funny because as I was in that stairwell, I kept on asking myself, why do I care? I had seen the homeless suffering my entire life and never thought twice about it. What makes today different? I still don't know the answer to that question to this day, but there's two things I do know for sure. One, I actually started to have empathy for the homeless. And two, I didn't get that job. I've always loved weekends. I get to sleep in, not worry about school and sports, and just take a second to be lazy. The week has drained me. I've spent hours at school, first going to classes until three, and then two hours of practice follow. I come home to a couple hours of homework, quickly eating dinner, and going to sleep just to do it all over again the next day. I'm not saying that my life used to be boring or the same as every day. I'm just saying that my life was so packed full of things I had to do, I hardly ever slowed down to take a moment, step back, and appreciate what I had. Life was so interesting over a month ago. A lot has changed since then. I'm definitely not as busy, and I don't feel rushed with the work I do have. Everything's slower. It's been a pretty drastic change. Everyone is freaking out. The grocery stores are empty. A couple of the most bought out items are hand sanitizer, toilet paper, and bottled water. I mean, I get hand sanitizer, but toilet paper, bottled water? Are people scared that the coronavirus is going to get into the water supply or something? <laughs> Anyway, every day seems to be the same. There are many things that I hate about shelter in place, but the number one thing is the social aspect of it. I'm not able to see my friends and family, and I'm forced to communicate with them through FaceTime and Zoom. I mean, I'm happy that we're even able to use these things, but they really aren't the same as talking person to person. I hadn't even heard of Zoom before the coronavirus took over the world, so I guess I'm glad it's even a thing. Anyway. That's the number one thing I missed from before quarantine. When I think about what I was doing a couple weeks ago, it's all a jumbled mess because nothing new and interesting is ever happening. Now, instead of getting up at seven to get ready for school, I find myself sleeping until nine, dragging myself to get breakfast and then procrastinating my work because why not? I have the time. Though it has been boring, I haven't completely wasted my time. Quarantine sucks, but that doesn't mean I have to stop living. We've been trying so many new things that we wouldn't be doing if life was normal right now. My house has turned into everything. We use it as our home, school, gym, workplace, and even restaurant. We got sourdough starter to make bread and have been making fresh bread all the time. Before quarantine, I hadn't even heard of sourdough starter. We also have much more time to cook, so dinner's been really good. I've been going on many more bike rides, hikes, and runs. I've also been reading way more. I finished a whole book in less than a week, which didn't used to happen when I had so much going on in school. Although my life has drastically changed, I'm grateful for this time with my family because I know that this will make me appreciate living life more. It has been me, you, and my thoughts for four weeks now. And you don't understand how much someone can realize by staying alone with their thoughts. You know, being stuck inside this house finally made me realize that I don't need you. And I can't believe I lost two years of my life into this time-consuming, abusive relationship. So yeah, tell me that I'm wrong and that I'm going insane. That he will always loved me and will never hurt me. But when I was crying myself asleep, you were other girls telling them they are your world for what? Huh? To have a roof on your head? Because you and I both know that I'm the only one that actually worked here. I'm the one that pays your rent. But that doesn't matter, right? Because this was your plan the whole time, wasn't it? I worked my ass off while you other girls. F*** you. 
I'm done trying to change me for you. You manipulated me to think I needed you when you were the one needing me this whole time. But I don't need I don't need this. I don't need you. So go ahead. Call me ugly and stupid. But I'm done. What do you want me to do? Make a scene, cry? Well, I can't do that anymore. I'm done. So if it were you, I will leave right now. And never come back. My name's Chris, and so far this quarantine, I've been doing nothing but procrastinating and then procrastinating. I've been trapped in this house for over two months, and slowly but surely, I'm losing my mind. I've been playing video games for over 52 hours straight, and I'm losing grip on reality. To keep myself in check, I usually like to spend my day skateboarding, taking out the trash, doing things that make me happy, that's not all. So far, I've unlocked many different skills that I don't need and are quite useless, so I decided to try also acquiring the skill of driving. <laughs> that went well. Aside from my insane driving skills, I'd like to say that I am truly missing my friends, and I do miss my girlfriend Haley a lot. Yeah, it gets kind of lonely around here if you didn't notice. Ugh. <sighs> Anywho, thank you so much for watching, and I'd just like to take a moment to thank all the first responders out there risking their lives and ensuring our safety. With that note, I'd like to say thank you for watching, and goodbye. Did we cut? Oh, okay, I'm gonna stop now. I don't know how much longer I can stay inside. Physically, I'm trapped in my house. Mentally, I'm trapped in the prison that is my mind. It's a maze I can't escape, a puzzle I can't figure out and a lock without a key in sight. I can't just sit here and let time pass me by. Sitting and conversing with the wolves can only entertain me for so long. I thought a break from the world would be good, but it's caused more mental destruction than I could ever think is possible. My lack of social interactions tearing down the walls inside me piece by piece. I refer to myself as a house. As long as the outside looks pretty, no one can even bother to think about what it looks like on the inside. Every day is so repetitive. Wake up, breathe, relax. Remember there's more to life than today's situation. I tell myself soon this will all be over. And I can work on restoring my mental health. But I close my eyes and let it pass through one ear and out the other. I don't digest a single thing I've said. Many people tell me that being alone can really help restore one's mental health. But as a social person I am, I have to highly disagree. I was only 16 when my best friend killed herself. It's been a year since that day, the world doesn't even seem to care. I mean, how, how can everyone just go about their lives and, and, and stay happy? It, it, it's not fair. Why does everyone else get to be happy? I'm stuck with all this guilt. Deep down, I do know why God cursed me to carry these chains. Not a day goes by where I don't think about her now that I've changed what happened. It's my fault she's... It's my fault she's dead. I never was there for her. And I never was the friend she needed me to be. I was, I was always caught up in my selfish needs. I caused disaster everywhere I went. I can't do anything right. God damn it. I didn't even stop for one second to pay attention to her. And look at what she was going through. It should have been me. And not a day goes by where I wouldn't give anything 
to trade places with her. But it's too late now. And now my only friend is the oxy I take to hide the fact that I killed my best friend. Now just take a deep breath. Let all other thoughts escape your mind as you travel deeper and deeper. And wait a minute, how am I supposed to focus on my breath when I can't even keep track of my homework every week? How do you expect me to just sit down and let go of my thoughts when I can't even remember what day of the month it is? I'm sorry. My doctor says I have some sort of multiple personality disorder. Whatever that's supposed to mean. And you know, I think this whole coronavirus thing is just some sort of plot to show us how dumb and distracted we are. And the one thing that really pisses me off is how long the damn in and out Burger drive through is. Like, what the hell? Step out of it, Jimmy. What the heck was that for? It's okay to be expressing these feelings. Just breathe. Just let all of those bad thoughts wash away as you enter a state of complete peace. But what if I shh? Just listen to the sound of my voice as you travel deeper and deeper. And you know what? Screw this meditation crap. I have been absolutely loving the last couple of weeks. Genuinely. I used to go to a park and just try to prance around and enjoy myself, but I never could because some idiot kids would always spot me and I'd have to change my location. But no more. Now is the time for frolicking in the lilies without restraint. Everywhere you look, life is just seemingly getting better and better. My wife and I are just relax at home and the kids go out and play to their heart's content as long as they stay away from the freeway ramp. You know, it's simple. It's beautiful. I mean, heck, the world itself has been flourishing. The sky looks bluer than ever. The water is crystal clear. And the air. Oh, man. The air just hits differently when it's free of that manufactured smell. And all of nature's regeneration just in time for the cyclical rebirth of spring. Colors everywhere. The blue of the sky. The fresh green buds sprouting from the soft brown earth. And the vibrant flowers of every color with the orange, the poppies, the purple lavender, and the baby blue eyes. Nature's pleasures are all but heavenly. I want to get this. The other day, I went out into downtown. And no one, I mean no one, was in eyesight. I could trot along completely unbothered. I mean, sure, a few cars might pass along every now and then, but every intelligent adult knows not to walk in the street unless you want to end up like Larry. Poor guy. Didn't even see it coming. He was a deer in the headlights. But enough about the unpleasantries, let's talk about how nice it is to have all this open space. The amount of places to defecate at those particularly delicious plants that grow only on the other side of the freeway ramp. So easy to get to nowadays. I've even had to start rationing myself. And all the humans have been staying at home and the amount of gifts that they leave in black bags has been immense. I was talking to some raccoons and they're just living it up. They think that they're offering a truce, but I'm not too sure about that. The gardens have become even harder to hop into without getting seen. It really is a small price to pay for nature's wondrous return to glory and the mass hiding of humans, though. Whatever the reason for all the changes, I am truly grateful, and I hope it stays like this forever. Hello, my name is Brandon Flynn, and today I will be performing my monologue. If only I'd brought a book with me into quarantine. Or if my room just came with books I hadn't read yet. Not that I'm blaming you, phone. You did an excellent job of getting me through mindless Zoom meetings. But it would have been nice to have some reading material. It would have been like having a dialogue instead of just an endless soliloquy. Who knew quarantine day 60 would be so bad? I mean, all the other days were rough, but to have to extend it another 30 days? I might not get by. I've been trying, though. It got so bad I started talking to you, phone. One of my friends in this endless least seeming quarantine. You're a great listener, though, Phone. I worry I might be getting on your nerves sometimes. You can't live with someone for 60 days and not bother them occasionally, right? Like, you do run out of power really often. Not a lot. I don't mind it most of the time. Truly, I don't. And my Xbox? What can I even say? 
It's the most selfless friend I have here, letting me use it to procrastinate work for hours on end. But none not complaining at all? That's true friendship. At least my fish can kind of carry the conversation. Or maybe you're asking me to shut up. All I hear from you is blub, 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 back and forth, all day and night. It's almost like music sometimes. You know what? You're right, phone. With the two of you and my room back there as my shelter and support, I don't need a book. It's impossible to be lonely with friends like you. As you all know, there is a highly contagious virus spreading around the world called COVID-19 or coronavirus. This virus has caused the government to issue a quarantine, which at first I thought was going to be terrible. But then I started liking it. I started liking it because I realized that I could wake up later than usual and have way, way more free time. This was great news because I come from a wealthy home and with all this free time, I could do all the activities that I have at home. With all the time in the world, I could do whatever I want, including nothing. Now, you must be wondering, why, why am I even telling you all this? Well, because that, that was the past me. And I don't want you to make the same mistakes as I did. Because I did none of my responsibilities, my life, it became a mess. And many, many, many things went wrong. For example, my schoolwork. I realized I needed to get my life back in order again. Because if I didn't, I would just keep wasting my life by doing nothing. Soon, I organized my brain and I accomplished all my responsibilities. But in doing this, I also realized I needed to become a better version of myself. And quarantine was a perfect time to focus on becoming a better me. After realizing this, I started focusing more on myself and I am proud to say, I have improved tremendously. I feel like I'm the best version of myself right now. I want to wrap this up by saying, don't, don't make the same mistakes as I did. And please, take advantage of quarantine by doing productive things and focusing on yourself once every day, at least once. Remember, you can always be a better version of yourself. And never, never, never stop loving yourself.